All right, guys, um, I'm going to do a series of actually just making all the games through video for people that maybe have trouble um, following the presentations online. It's just another way for you to get access to the information. So um, this is going to be Flip the Robot Monkey Section 1. So you're going to start off your flip game by making a new project. Um, I want you to call it like your first name and last name and then flip. So I'm going to call mine Mr. Wagner flip, something like that. I, I wanted to have your name in there to identify. It just makes it easier for the viewport size. We're going to go 1280 by 720. Um, the viewport size is the size of the window the player actually sees when they're playing the game. So it's not the size of your layout. It's the size of the physical pop-up window that appears when you're playing the game. The rest is good. So then you can click create. Okay. Um, what we're going to do here is um, we've got our game labeled already and we have the viewport size. I'm going to show you quick in case you click create right away and you didn't get the viewport size set or the name set. What you can do is at the top here it would say new project and then in the properties window here on the left side you could just rename it there or you could right click it and rename it this way. Okay, And then the viewport if you highlight it in the properties window you will see viewport size on the left and right there it's set the 1280 by 720 on the left side so this top part here the very top item in this project window that's your actual project and so you're seeing the properties on the left for the entire project that's reset viewport size okay um next thing i'm going to do is we're just going to rename a couple of things so here's our layout one um i want you to rename it level one we can either right click it or we could go up here in the properties window on the left and rename it. So I'll just right click it um, and then we'll rename. Now the way you label this is very important. So please do it how I'm doing it here. We're going to call it level with a capital L, the number one with no spaces. This is super important because the naming of our levels will have a huge impact later on when we're doing our level progression system. Okay, we're going to rename our event sheet one and we're going to call it ES game. Um, all event sheets, I like to start with the letter ES in lowercase and then the actual name of what the event sheet is for. So we're calling it ES game because it's the event sheet for all of our main game events. Okay. Um, on our level one, go ahead and just double click that again. We are going to change the layout size of that. So um, on our level one, um, we're going to go on the left side and set the layout and where is oh it's right here so it says size i was looking for the word layout that's why i got confused so it's just right up here at the top so here's the name level one make sure when you create new uh layouts later on that it's assigned an event sheet so by default this is assigned to es game which we just renamed and then the size we're going to make it 1280 by 720 to start this will change later on but we'll do it 1280 by 720 for now Okay, so now our layout size matches our window size. So if we were to run the game, it would all be the same size. Okay, um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a background inserted on here. So to insert an object, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, you could just, if you're on the layout, you can just, like what I do is I just double click on the outside and you get this screen here to insert an object. Or what you can do is in this project window, you can go down to object types, this folder right here. And you can right click it and add a new object type. So either way works. Um, typically I do the object type folder here if I'm like on an event sheet or something. But if I'm on the layout, I usually just double click the layout. Um, the background is going to be an object called tiled background. Now you can scroll and search for it. Or I like to use the search bar up here and just start typing it in. And it pops up really fast. So tiled background. And I'm going to name it right away. And I'm just going to call it level one background. Um, and this is just programmer etiquette. Like when you label stuff, you typically don't do empty spaces. So um, I'm just doing level one BG. You could call it level one background and write it all out however you want. Okay, so I'm going to click insert. And then you get this little cursor and you want to click on the screen. And then you're going to get the image editor window. This is where we can load in the sprite. So the background doesn't have any animations. So we're just going to click this folder here in the upper left. If you hover over it, it'll say load image. So I'm going to do this. And then you want to locate um, your flip asset. So I have a separate video telling you how to download and get the asset. So if you're not sure how to do it, you're going to want to go back and watch that video. But if you follow that video, your asset should just be like in your downloads folder. So just wherever you need to go. So I'm going to go and get to my assets here. So I have mine in a folder that's kind of buried a little bit. So just give me one second here. And it should be under old desktop. Okay. And then intro to game design. And 
then flip. All right, and then when you find the flip folder, it's going to have images and sounds. You're going to go in the images, and then you might not see the actual pictures here. So if you click, there should be like a little view option here, and you can click the arrow, and I like to put on like large icons. Then I can see little thumbnail sketches of what I'm looking for. Okay, and so we're looking for level one background, which is right here, and it just loads in. Um, if you loaded this in as a tiled background, it doesn't even have the option to have an origin point. So that's good. We can just leave this and we can close it. Um, if you accidentally load it in as a sprite, there's kind of a huge difference between a tiled background and a sprite. So you can see because this is a tiled background, I can stretch this box out and it keeps everything the original ratio. Like it's not stretching the pixels. And then if the picture doesn't fit, it just crops it out. And if it goes longer than what I want, it just keeps stretching it out, or it doesn't stretch it. It just keeps repeating the image. So tiled background is good if you have like um, backgrounds that are an image that can repeat side by side and it'll just keep doing it like a wallpaper. So that's what this is. And by default, the origin is in the top left. It doesn't tell you that, but that's where it is. You can see that little tiny square there, okay? So what we wanna do basically is we wanna get it in the upper left and we want it to fill the layout perfectly. Now you can click and drag these little rectangles and try to get it you know, as close as you can, but I like to be very precise. So the position here in the upper left, the X and Y coordinate for the top left corner is zero, zero. So if I click on my background and I put the position to zero comma zero, I'm gonna put perfectly tuck it in the corner. And then I know my layout is 1280 by 720. So if I go ahead and just change the size to 1280 by 720, that's locked in there perfectly, okay? Now, I don't want to move this background ever again. I want it to stay there and I don't want it to like interfere with what I'm doing. So what we need to do is we need to set up um, a layer for it and we're gonna lock it down. So down here in the lower left, you should have a layers window. Okay, and it might have tile map looped with it. So just make sure you click the tabs here at the bottom, but by default, it should be there. If you're missing the layers window, and I'll just cover this right now, but you should have a project window, a layers window, and a properties window. If you ever lose a window, just click menu here in the upper left and then click view and then bars. And then there, these ones right at the top. These top three are what you for sure need. Tile map isn't really required for the class, but I will teach you guys about tile maps because some people use it on their final project. So realistically, you just need those top three. And then the bar, the window will pop up and you can drag it to wherever you want to. But this is the format that I use, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layer zero and we're gonna rename it the background layer. So I'm just gonna right click it. I'm gonna rename it. And I'm just gonna type BG for background or you could type it out all the way. Um, and then what I need to do is I want to make a new layer. So if you just right click in this empty space here in the layers, I can just add a layer to the top. And then I'm just gonna call this layer main. And then what I'm gonna do is since this was created, um, you can click on it and see, but it'll show here on the left that it is on the background layer. So what I wanna do now is I wanna lock that layer down and now I can't even click and highlight. I can't even click and highlight it. So it's gonna be kind of stuck there and it's all good. If I do decide later on I wanna edit it, just quickly uncheck or unlock the background layer by clicking that lock and then you're good to go. Okay, so we've got all that on there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add Flip into our game. We're gonna get him to move around a little bit and like simply just give him a, a ground to stand on. So to add an object, I'll just double click my layout. Um, flip is going to be a sprite. So you just find the sprite and click on it and I'm gonna name him Flip. Now I'll show you a common mistake. So this said sprite at first. So a lot of people exit, like if you double click this, it just goes right to the insert and then you missed your chance to name it. That's not a big deal. So I'm still gonna click here. I'm gonna do everything like I normally did do. So I got the cursor there. I'm clicking on the screen. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click this folder to load an image and we're just gonna do the normal flip image. Okay, and it's just a single frame, no animations yet. So we're good to go there. Um, and as of right now, I'm not going to change any other settings on him. I'm just going to leave him as is. So I'm going to close the window and I've got my little flip guy here. Ah, but here's an issue. I had the background layer highlighted, which is locked, right? And I added him in. So now I can't click on him because he's on a locked layer. So that's not a big deal. Um, down here, 
you'll see where my cursor is. Oh, I was going to try to highlight it, but I can't really do it. But right down here where I'm circling, you can see it says active layer background. If I click on main, it'll say active layer main. So right now, if I created a new sprite or a new object, it would go on to the main layer. So I wasn't paying attention and I was on the background layer and I accidentally made them. This is good because this is a very common mistake. So you can see that. So it's a very easy fix. So I'm going to unlock the background layer. I'm going to click on flip. And in the properties of an object on the left side here, you can change the layer. So here's the layer. I simply hit this box and change him to the main layer. Now I can relock the background and then I'm going to highlight main. So that's my active layer. So that when I add other things in there, then I'm good to go. So now flip is here. You can see I can move him around and he's good. So now he's going to sit there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a behavior so he can move around. Like right now, if I run the game, like nothing happens. He's just a floating spray. Okay, and the whole idea here is that computers are very stupid. So the computer doesn't understand that Flip is going to be my main character and that he needs to run and move around and all that stuff. Um, a computer just sees it as a sprite. And the reason why a computer is stupid is because it will only do something if it's told to do it and it won't ever assume anything. So it's never, it's, you know, even though it's obvious to us that he should be moving around, it's not to the computer. It just sees pixels. That's all it is. And it hasn't been told to do anything with it, so it's not going to. So to tell the computer that Flip is a character that can jump and move around, we're going to give him a behavior. So on the left side here in the properties, I can click on behaviors. And then I can click to add a new behavior. Okay. Um, and we're going to give him a behavior called platform. And what the platform behavior does, it basically makes him like a Mario character where he has gravity and he can walk left and right and he can jump. Okay. So I'm going to click add and give him the platform behavior. Now, because he has gravity, what that means is, is he is simply just going to fall off the screen. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add some ground for him to stand on. So I'm going to make sure the main layer is highlighted. Double click to make a new sprite. So we're going to do sprite. I'm going to call it ground. Insert it. Click on the screen when you get that cursor. And then this is a single frame. So I'm going to click this load image in the upper left. And then I'm going to find the ground object. So here it is. Dungeon ground is the one we're going to use. So I'm going to double click it. Now, um, all objects, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. Objects have um, a collision box and an origin point, okay? So the collision box looks like this. Now, for this, we want it to just have a nice square collision box. So I'm going to click on that collision box, and I'm going to right-click in the middle here, and I'm going to do set to bounding box. That's just going to give it a nice clean box. If it's even like if one of these were one pixel off, like a character can actually like clip into it and like get stuck on the ground. So it needs to be perfectly flat. Then the origin. This is the single pixel that it uses to trace its X and Y position. Um, so the origin is really important. If the origin is inconsistent, especially on something that has multiple frames, it's going to make your character look glitchy and not work correctly. Okay. Now, with platform and ground objects, most objects like being in the middle is perfect, right? But for platform and ground objects, it's really good to have it in either the bottom left or the top left. Okay, so I'm going to do bottom left for this platform. So what you're going to do is you have to highlight this little button right here. So it's orange like mine. Then you should see this image point window here on the left. Then you want to right click on the word origin and you're going to do quick assign and we're going to quick assign it to bottom left. The reason why we want to do that quick assign option is because then it will automatically put it in the right spot. If I click anywhere on the screen, it will change the origin. So you have to be careful of that when you're like just doing other things. And if this is selected, if you click anywhere on here, so you see like I randomly click there, my origin just moved to this really weird spot and it's going to mess up your object. So right click, quick assign, uh, bottom left. Okay, so that's good. Um, so there's my ground object. Now you're not going to see why in this video, but the significance of having the origin there is very important because later on we're going to set up a grid and um, this is going to snap into the grid, and by having it in the bottom left, it's going to make it fit into the grid how we want. So for now, I'm just going to estimate and just guess and put it down here. Um, I think in the presentation, they tell you exact coordinates, but to me, that's not really necessary because we're going to set up a grid later anyways, and the grid is going to make it perfect. Okay, so I've got that there. Now, here's why a computer is stupid. We know that that's a ground, and he should be able to stand on it, right? Well, if I run the game, you'll see he just falls right through, Okay. So the computer, once again, doesn't see this as ground. It just sees it 
as a sprite. It's just pixels, right? So we have to give it a behavior to tell it that it needs to block him. So I'm going to go to behaviors with the ground highlighted, and I'm going to add a behavior called solid. Solid basically means it is solid, so that flip cannot fall through. So I'm going to do that, and now flip can stand and walk on here. So at this point, your flip should be able to jump, and should be able to move left and right with the arrow keys and should be um, blocked with this. Now, the reason Flip can move left and right and jump with the arrow keys, you might think, well, if a computer's stupid, how does it know to do that on those key presses? Because we haven't done any coding on our event sheet. Well, all of that is packed into the platform behavior. So some of the behaviors, they have what's called default controls that just automatically tell the computer what to do with that behavior. So these are default controls. So it's programmed that the arrow keys work. Um, based on just having the platform behavior. Okay, obviously there's still a lot of other things we'll have to add to Flip to fix him, but we'll do that later. All right, so that concludes section one.